In this episode, we'll be talking about a better definition for service design. We'll talk about how the digital transformation and service design go together. And finally, we'll address one of the biggest challenges in service design, and that is implementing solutions. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. I am Søren Pickman, and this is the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you to design and deliver services that have a positive impact on people and are good for business. My guest in this episode is a collector of airplane sickness bags, but he also wrote a book on service design back in 2009, and a new book one book is coming out pretty soon. His name is Søren Pechman. In this episode, we're going to talk about what is wrong with all the definitions of service design that are out there and what is a better definition. And we'll also address, like I said, one of the biggest challenges in service design, and that is implementing our solutions. That's what Seren will be sharing in this episode. And speaking about definitions of service design, if you are interested to learn how to explain service design in plain English, Make sure you check out my free training on how to do that. Check the show notes down below for the link to that training. And we release new videos in this channel every week that help you to level up your service design skills. So if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are out. That's it for the introduction. And now let's quickly jump into the interview with Søren. Welcome to the show, Søren. Thanks a lot, Mark. Nice to be here. I, I really look forward to talk to you. But first of all, for the people who don't who don't have a clue who you are, could you briefly introduce yourself? I can. I am from Denmark. Uh, I have been working in service design for the last uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, I come. I'm not a designer. I come from a communication background. Um, yeah, 15 years ago, I think I heard about service design from a Finnish friend of mine, and uh, I started uh, to digging into the topic, and it was a complete uh, revelation for me. It mm. was uh, outstanding in many ways. It solved a couple of the problems I had, and uh, I, I, I would say the rest is history. I started yes. writing uh, books about service design and um, done a lot of keynotes, uh, presentations, workshops, whatever since. How many books have you published? Just one or m- multiple? Actually, I'm working on number seven. Oh, number seven. Gosh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, and, <laughs> and, uh, that, well, so we can introduce you as an author or, or a writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you can. You're welcome. The first two of them was about project management, so that was uh, completely different. But hmm. uh, the, the, the rest of them have, have been about service design and related topics like customer journey, uh, yeah. service recovery, uh, okay. and, and we are wor- we're working on a, on, a, on a new book about service design, which, we, which, will, which will be published uh, earlier this, next year. Okay, I think we'll talk about that in a second. You also, uh, also almost answered my other question that I ask everyone, and that is how did you get in touch with service design? You said a Finnish friend, what's the story behind yeah. that? Yes. How did that yeah. go? Well, it, it was a Finnish friend in communication business. And, and uh, as you know, uh, Finland are, are strong in service design. Yeah, absolutely. And in, yeah. in back in, I guess it was 2008 or seven or something like that. Uh, my friend, Marku, he, uh, he called me and he said, well, you should, uh, you should look at this service design thing. And, um, and I went to, to see him uh, and went to see if he was either I wouldn't say drunk or, <laughs> or something, but but yeah. to try to find out what he was about to do because he he had plans about leaving uh, what he was doing and 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 turning towards service design as well. He mm. did something else, but uh, and then I discovered that that there was a topic called service design and uh, that uh, not least that the Finns are are strong in this. And uh, I have been in Finland talking about service design and, and listening to great service designers a number of times, a number of times uh, mm. Finns. Cool. Um, so, and you gave me a really interesting topics. I think they're super relevant for everybody who is watching and listening to the show. So, are you ready to dig into them? Absolutely. Okay. 
uh, I already told you we're going to do uh, interview jazz. So we're going to improvise <laughs> and I'm going to pick the first topic, um, which is definition. And do you have a question started that goes along with this one? I, I will. Oh, I will you're, you're going to do it. You're going to do interview <laughs> jazz. Do it. And what does it say? It says why. Well, wow. So what question could you make out of this? Why a new definition? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Is there a new definition? Yeah, actually, as I just mentioned, uh, over over the summer, I have been working on a new book about service design with a colleague of mine, Mitte Mikkelsen, which is a designer as well. Uh, and we have been, uh, yeah, been, been writing this book, which will be published uh, next year. I believe that you know, and many in the service design community know, that there is an ongoing I wouldn't say joke, but at least a story saying that if you ask 10 designers about the definition of service design, you will get at least 11 definitions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I completely agree with that. I, 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 when, I, when we were working on this book, I tried to dig up all the definitions we could find. And there was a lot. And I tried to take them apart and uh, assemble them again and, and try to see what was strong and right mm -hmm. and wrong mm -hmm. about them. Um, and we ended up with, I don't know if it's definition number 12, but at least uh -huh. a new one. <laughs> okay. Um, and our definition is very, very simple. And there is a reason behind that. Because our definition says that service design is about designing services. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, I add mm -hmm. a lot of things to it, but service design is about designing services. And you will say, of course it is. But at least from my point of view, that's not obvious. Because service design is also, also, uh, often uh, compared to or um, looked at in, in different ways where you could say, is it really service design you're talking okay. about? Hmm. Hmm. In my opinion, it's extremely important to, to double click on design and to double click on service if you want to understand what service design is. Right. So, it is, so uh, sorry for yeah, interrupting sorry. you, but is it? I I, uh, I I think I can add sixty uh, other definitions to to your uh, list because okay. that's the question I ask almost all my uh, guests. Uh, but I'm thinking, um, I run a service design studio, but I wouldn't say that uh, all of our projects uh, really relate to designing a service. Although we are a service design studio, is that what sort of? Uh, makes this thing so complex that a lot of service design projects aren't actually about designing services? Perhaps, um, but, but what, at least what I'm trying to, to say is that, that what was new, interesting, relevant for me when I discovered and when I work with service design is the design tools, the design methods, mm -hmm. the design thinking, the design doing. And if you want to understand that, and what I mean when you talk about all the different definitions of what, what service design is, that is often that you, you, uh, uh, you try to take, of course, the most important part of what design is and put it into one sentence, together with the most important part of yeah. what service mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And then either they, the definitions, in my opinion, will be extremely simple and not covering the whole topic, or they will be extremely long. I, I one of the last definitions I found was a <laughs> co-created definition, which was very, very long, not easy to understand and very difficult to remember. So in my opinion, that's the reason why there's, there's uh, something I, I'll add about our definition. But the reason why we said that service design is about designing services, meaning that you have to double click on design, and understand what design thinking, what mm, design mm. doing is, you also have to double click on service to understand the nature yes. of the service. Yes. We have added a word to the definition because we believe- To make it even more simple, <laughs> to add to the complexity. <laughs> a little more complex to, to say that service design is about designing sustainable services. We and believe- how, Sustainable in which sense? Two senses, uh -huh. in the sense in the, in the, I would say, classical sustainable sense, 
that is a question of that we sh as as service designers should be focusing on designing services that from an environmental point of view mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. works that we leave the planet a little better than it that was mm -hmm. when we when we took it over that's a classical sustainable part the other part of why we call it sustainable is a question of balancing a service which is attractive effective and or different meaning that it's it's a question at least not to to balance attractive and effective that we create services that are attractive to our customers users patients whatever but also effective for the organizations behind the service it's so easy to create something which is attractive we could have mm -hmm. open 24 7 you will never wait whatever but that would not be effective it's also very i wouldn't say easy but it's possible to create something which is very effective but not necessarily mm -hmm. attractive so the balance between those two and I'm not taking uh, the pride of, of inventing this. Uh, I know that Birgit Marga and many others have focusing, been focusing on this as well. But I think the balance there is extremely important. And, and the next thing, the third thing about it is differentiation. That in my point of view, coming from a communication background, I still believe, or at least now I believe, that the easiest way to differentiate yourself from your competitors is by creating services that are different, mm -hmm. that are better in, to some extent. Instead of just telling them that you are good, showing them that, showing them, uh, that instead, and you can use service design, in my opinion, to do that. Mm. And super interesting. And I think um, the, the clue in your definition and saying that you need to double click on services and uh, design, I think some other guests said it in the show. The problem with service design is that it combines two complicated words into something even more complicated that people don't, <laughs> don't really understand what a service is and they don't really understand what design is. So the design of services, it, yeah, it's, it's hard to comprehend. Final question yeah. regarding this topic is, um, you've done a lot of research about this, but what was the aha moment for you? When did you get the big insight? You mean when, when I started working with service design? No, uh, when you were working on this new definition, ah, on okay. this new book. What, what, what was yeah. the moment that you thought, oh, not, now it starts to make sense? <laughs> I, think, I think the whole process, when, when we, are, we, are, we have been two people working on this book, and uh, it's the second time that I write a book together with somebody else. And it, that's, that is, no doubt, it's a challenge. Uh, it's much easier to some extent to write a book on yourself. Mm -hmm. But the, the great things about writing a book with somebody else is all the discussions. And, and I would say that I have heard myself say something than, than when I just heard it, then I suddenly understood it or some, mm. suddenly saw it in a different way. And I, I remember that we have had a lot of discussions about the definition and, and they were very some of them extremely complex and extremely they were not wrong but they were so yeah complex and complicated that perhaps we understood them and perhaps we could remember mm. them and then suddenly we had this well isn't it just about this yeah and and uh, i can't remember the exact moment but yeah, yeah. but it was a lot of discussions a lot of uh, coffee and perhaps a uh, yeah, having having know. to verbalize <laughs> or to explain to somebody else what you're thinking is one of the best ways to help, help yourself understand what you're doing. Yeah. Let's move on uh, to the second topic. Drum roll. The second topic is about digital, digital solutions. solutions. And I'll mm. try to. Uh, there we go. To do as, do as you say. How can we? How can the typical. We? Yeah, the classic <laughs> design question. How so how can, can we, we? How can we challenge the digital solutions? Uh, I think I, I have a secret that I would like to share with you. Uh, I am not as old as I look. <laughs> uh, luck, lucky me. Uh, but because when, when I'm saying what I'm about to say, uh, some people would say that I'm very old or very conservative. Uh, which I'm not, at least not yet. Um, I think 
that you could get the impression that no matter what the problem is nowadays, the solution is digital. Hmm. Um, you don't you don't care about what the problem is, what the reason behind it is. Just make an ad app mm. or mm -hmm. just make a mm -hmm. new website or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I have no doubt, like so many others, that there are outstanding, fantastic, great digital solutions out there. Mm -hmm. That um, I was traveling last week. I love going through Copenhagen Airport with the possibilities that, that we have on self-check-in, yeah. self-service uh, in many different ways. I can use the app to uh, understand when my plane is delayed or where the all the you know that you know mm. the journey. Mm -hmm. It is great. I have so many possibilities on using digital solutions to do things today that, that I couldn't do a year or two ago. Uh, my family and I we have exchanged homes with people around the world because of the internet, mm. and we have never met those people. We have talk to them, we have perhaps uh, Skyped with them and things like that, but we have slept in their beds and used their cars and used their kitchens and whatever, just because of applications on the internet. That is great. But I'm wondering if all solutions automatically get better because they are digital. And I, I'm wondering if you as a service designer should wonder if there might be uh, better solutions than, than digital solutions. Why, why, uh, why are you worried about this topic? Where is this I'm, coming I'm, from? I'm com it's coming, from, it's coming from, from actually what I said earlier that, that about the attractive and effective things. Because I don't believe that just because it's digital, it's, it's effective. Not mm -hmm. always. I, I mean, I have been in working with clients where, where some people just simply said, why don't we call the customers? Why don't we just pick up the phone, call them, and talk ask to them. them what their yeah. problem is, yeah. talk yeah. to them. And, and I think, I don't know about, I, don't, I, I have watched some of your, your episodes in the show, and I love it, by the way. Uh, and it's, I'm, I'm not completely into all countries, of course, but at least from my point of view, at least here in the Nordic area, I see, uh, I see solutions where you are focusing so much on, on the digital part and just forget the simple things in life. Just forget also about the your human relations. I, I read about, uh, I think he was called Krukov, and a general in the American army who said, the closer you are to the front, uh, the closer you are to your customers or uh, uh, something like that. And I think that's one of the, the, the uh, dangers about mm. digital mm. solutions that you're creating distance to your customers. We have been working for a large bank here in Denmark, and uh, they have a lot of digital solutions. As, as one bank uh, director said, we have never had as many touch points with our customers as we have today. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we haven't, uh, it's so seldom that we see yeah. our customers. Yeah, yeah. And that is, that is critical, I think. Mm. We have also, I also worked for, for a hospital where, um, where they tried to use, again, tried to use diff, uh, different diff, digital solutions to, to uh, um, improve the service experience, the connection to, to the patients and the relatives. And then there was a hospital who said, why don't we use a piece of paper? Because those patients and relatives are in, a, in emotional, difficult situations. And then we ask them to download an app or go to the internet. And sometimes that is not the best solution. Why don't we just use, give them a piece of paper and say, if you have any questions, here is a guide how to write a great question uh, or, or have a place to place your questions for the next time you see the doctor and you can use the relatives and use that in a, in, in a great uh, connection to do that. So I'm not, it's important for me to say that I, I don't believe that the internet will break down or that you, we shouldn't use that. Not at all. I love them in many contexts, but but um, I just I just believe that we as service designers should and have an obligation try, to try to uh, also look at at alternatives. 
yeah <clears throat> I, I can totally agree uh, with that uh, first of all I think the best way to learn about service design is to design to work on the most basic offline services, right? To, to redesign a restaurant, to redesign, uh, I don't know, anything that's not digital related, that's the best way to sort of try to understand service design. And while you were giving examples of the airport, I remember that we worked for an airline company here and they, they sort of have uh, interaction with 40,000 passengers, I don't know, a month, but, um, they understand their customers as passengers, not as people. Mm. So that's what I, what I'm also getting from your story. That although we are we are sort of literally having a conversation, we're not talking about the right things. We try to make things smarter, more digital, but we're not making them more human per se. I agree. I agree. So it, it's it's like the, the digital transformation is like a magic word right now. Maybe next to digital transformation, we need a human transformation, people transformation. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. We also we also worked for for a customer that uh, suddenly said to us that they had seen an increase in uh, the number of customers who called them by the phone, although that they had a a, a number of different possibilities uh, across digital uh, platforms that that customers could contact mm -hmm. this company. And they suddenly they saw over time they saw an increase of customers contacting uh, the the company by phone. And when they digged into the numbers, it was obvious that it was youngsters, it was young people who mm. used the phone mm. to call this company, which was a kind of surprise because we, we were more or less confident that we said that most customers, uh, or at least most young people, would use digital devices to contact this company. Yeah, yeah. And they did, and they did, but they used the digital device that they also always have in their pocket, namely uh, the phone. And it perhaps, I don't know how or why, but they just used the phone to call a guy and said, we have a problem, solve it, let's move yeah. on. Instead yeah. of going into a contact form and all these things. Hmm. So perhaps well, well, there's, there's, yeah. there's a, a, you know, waves a wave. in, in, in different uh, directions. I, I see this pattern happening with myself. I was, I was calling, calling using the phone today with the Dutch Railways. I could have probably gone, went on on Twitter or send them an email, but I, yeah, I picked up the phone three times, yeah. I think, to, to sort something out. What is your sort of tip or advice for people who are dragged into the digital transformation train movement? How, how do we bring the human part back into that? What would be a good first step? I have a, I have a friend of mine who has decided to uh, go back to his old Nokia <laughs> uh, telephone, mobile phone. And the only thing he can do on that is to make a call. Uh, I think he can text. He doesn't do mm -hmm. it, but mm -hmm. I think he can. Uh, I don't, he, can't, he can't take any photos. And he has, he has really gone on uh, uh, an offline journey. Mm. Uh, and I talked to him about it, and he said that it was um, amazing. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you stay there forever, not at all, yeah. but yeah. Uh, he really, really loved it. I think sometimes we should do that, something like mm. that, really trying to to, uh, to see what happens if, if we try to, to step out of it and probably we'll see. I mean, it's also a kind of, of a service design method to try to, to look at the world in, uh, with different eyes. And then yeah. what I could be, say, if, if I mean, it, it could also be a tool. I, we use it in, in some of our workshops to say, what would the solution of this problem be if it is not digital at all? If we didn't have it any, if, if we, if internet didn't exist. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Human transformation. Let's, let's push for that. Um, <laughs> we have one more topic left. So yeah. let's, let's. Oh, I'm there worried, we go. I'm worried about, I'm okay. worried about this. Okay, this <laughs> one is a big one. This one is a really big topic in the service design world. It's called implementation. It is. It is. And my? Hmm. Says, How much? <laughs> How much implementation? A lot. <laughs> <clears throat> or, um, or, or a little. <laughs> or a little, yeah. Um, 
being being not a designer in a service design world uh, means perhaps some to some extent that that I'm I try at least to be extremely open and uh, focused on the multidisciplinary part of service design, saying that service design is not the solution on, on everything. We can drag in different kinds mm, of mm. methods or disciplines that could solve the problem. I think that's important when it comes to implementation. Uh, when we when we were working on this book, as I mentioned, um, I found an article in Touchpoint, I think, that said that um, somebody had had uh, read a number of books or uh, digged into uh, all the different uh, organizations, uh, agencies that have created uh, method cards mm -hmm. or trying mm -hmm. to to yeah. to, uh, to to pull together all the different methods. And, and they made a list of where these uh, methods applied. And it was so obvious that there are so many methods in discovering what the world is really about, uh, mapping journeys, mm. uh, creating new ideas, uh, prototyping, all that. And when it came to implementation, there was so few what you would call service design methods. I think that's that's quite interesting because that, that for me it meant that uh, as as a service design company you have to be focused on implementation if you want to have your customers taking you seriously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if if I have seen a number in in huge companies, seen a number of projects that was beautiful designed, uh, great observations. Fantastic mm. insights, great ideas, wonderful prototypes, and then then it was just left to the companies to implement. Uh, and then a number of things happened. Often, what happened was that nothing happened, and, exactly. or, yeah. or something, or something else completely different happened that what was supposed to happen. Well, what happens is a lot of disappointment. That's what's happening. Exactly. Exactly, and and I think that we as service designers should be um, really, really open-minded and focusing on trying to drag in relevant methods, relevant tools from from perhaps some of those that we try to differentiate us from, including like, business yeah. schools. Okay, I mean some of those guys, Chasey, Cutler, whatever. They have tools that you at least could start on and, and try to understand. Um, they they might not be as funky and sexy mm -hmm. as some of the, mm -hmm. uh, the design mm -hmm. tools, but perhaps they work. Mm -hmm. I think when we talked about digital solutions, I'm not completely sure about this across the world, but at least some of the companies working in service design that I know, I have seen them developing from what would you you would call perhaps full service service mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. agencies, focusing on all the right things, saying all the right words, having the full scale model. And today they are mainly focusing on digital solutions. And why? I, I see the same. Why is that so? I believe that when I work in, uh, for instance, I work together with a with number, uh, number of the classical uh, consultancies, consultancy companies, houses, mm -hmm. and they they understand the situation where they have to train 500 people, changing their behavior, changing what they do, changing what they say. And that is, that's not easy, definitely not. And it's, it's very different from what I see many of the service designers do and understand. Mm. And it's definitely do not done from your home office. It's yeah, done yeah. out in the companies. Yeah, and and that's it's completely different world, mm. but you have to. Um, I believe that the service designers must be able to understand this, must be able to to be there, mm. um, and and try to say sometimes if if I mean if you avoid training four hundred people, then you might have the situation that the companies would say that the customers would say. Okay, we go to others who are able to do that, and yeah, the yeah, classical yeah, consultants yeah. are. 
I, I, I'm going to make a bold statement, but I think still the service design community is uh, in large amount pretty naive when it comes to implementation. We sort of don't find it interesting and uh, haven't put much time and effort in actually understanding how to do it, what it means. Um, and uh, we really run the risk that uh, somebody else will come, like you said, and uh, yep. Uh, we will be uh, we will we will become irrelevant if we can't show the impact of our work, right? We need to Absolutely. take it to to the end. Absolutely, I, I, Mark. I completely agree with you. Hmm. I mean, what I see happening uh, in our projects, and I'm really curious how you approach implementation. But I think implementation in service design uh, has a different nature than implementation regarding architecture or products where you create a blueprint and then you implement. What I try to explain to uh, my coworkers here is that in service design, for me, implementation starts on day one. Implementation sure. is like, uh, it's an ongoing process the moment your uh, project starts. And that starts with things like understanding what the business KPIs are, understanding what the resources are to sort of scale up, things like that. And I, I I would really love to see more people talking about that. What is your experience regarding that? I, 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 I must say I completely agree with you. We say that implementation starts long before the implementation. Exactly. And, and, and that means that uh, we try to involve those who have to change or at least involve those who must make their colleagues or their employees change, involve them hmm. very, very early in the process. I have been working on a, a very large project uh, over the last couple of years where all uh, employees in, in a company, it, it was around 2,000 people, they were involved in, uh, in the project. And, and I'm not naive because, it's, of course, it's not always possible and it could be much larger mm. companies than that. It's not always possible, but it's definitely uh, at least increasing the chances of really making changes that you involve people we have we have a, we have a tendency to defend our own ideas and yeah. if if you have as as a human being the feeling that this is my idea i was part of that process then the challenge the chances are that you will fight for it you will work for it you will change your behavior are bigger i'm not saying it's easy i think it's extremely difficult and and i think it's it's of course, I think it's the most important part, and I think it's extremely difficult. But I think that, that some of those situations where you, the, the best situation, perhaps some of the best situations I have experienced in, in, in service design projects are situations where you see the light in people's eyes and say, well, that was, I'll fight for this. I'll work for it. Well, well let's, let's, let's do something about it. And of yeah. course, they have to, to, we have to be campaigning. We have to be, be there, helping them, pro uh, providing the, the <laughs> tools and, and, <laughs> It's it's yeah. it's not a journey that that ever stops. I believe mm -hmm. it, 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 you you have to change a culture. You really have to change a lot of things. And the, you're inspiring me also because I think it's also the message we convey to our clients and the way we help clients to brief service design agencies. Because I don't mm -hmm. see a lot of clients asking a question to actually uh, materialize upon ideas. Uh, they ask for a customer journey map, they ask for user research, and that's what we deliver. But I think it's also up to us to educate clients that, um, why do you want this customer journey map? I, I, I can make you a customer journey map, but the, what is your end goal? Do you want to change something? Do you want to implement yeah. that? That's yeah. what I want to talk about with you. Yeah. And you'll get the customer journey map exactly. in, in the process. I, I, again, I agree with you, Mark, uh, asking the why question. Yeah, uh, and, and, and not letting go, not, not accepting projects where you need to make a customer journey map, right? Accepting, exactly. uh, I, I recently um, uh, had an opportunity to sort of co-design a brief for a project and I said, I will only do this project if you can promise me that you will set aside a, project, uh, a budget for next year to actually implement five solutions. And yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. help you to figure out what these five solutions should be but I'm not going to make you a customer journey map just to make you a customer journey map. And I think that's our obligation to sort of help our clients also to understand that. Mm, I agree. Mm. And, and it make, and also makes me think a little of the, the fact that 
Customer journey mapping is, is I think perhaps we're a little off track here, but still, customer journey mapping is a great, great tool that we see a lot of companies understand and, and uh, ask for. Um, but mapping existing journeys is, is in my opinion, quite uh, dangerous, I would mm. say, in the sense that, that the, the risk that you, you, uh, uh, that, that your customer will, will be really disappointed about what your work is there because you use a lot of time mapping basically what you already know. Yeah. Instead of focusing on what could we do instead. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and I don't know if it's it's a huge problem, but but I have seen it sometimes that that uh, we know we are going from A to B, um, and we we use a lot of time on mapping the existing journey instead of saying what would what, what could we do? We know we're going to from A to B. What would be a great, attractive, effective, mm. different journey mm. instead? Mm. Um, we yeah. I think I think what I have learned from I know a number of of classical consultancy houses here in, in, in Nordic area. What I have learned from working with them is their uh, ability to ask the difficult questions and also demanding something from their customers. And I think that could be one of the challenges to service design agencies as well. We are new in the service design field. We are, some of us are extremely uh, excited when when the customer calls us and, and gives us a, an yeah. appointment, a yeah. job, whatever, and and then it's everything is possible and you don't question your customers yeah. because you just yeah. want the job, yeah. yeah, and you don't challenge them, and the, exactly. the great consultancy houses are great at challenging uh, their customers. Yeah, they know what they're doing and they know that it's it's necessary and that it works. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think we sort of are on the same page with regards to implementation. <laughs> <laughs> Super interesting topic. But Soren, um, we're sort of heading towards the end of the, this episode, but I, I want to give you the opportunity to ask us a question. Is there anything you'd like to ask the viewers, the listeners of the show? Then I will ask you a question that I get sometimes. And that question is whether service design is just another buzzword. Hmm. Will, okay. will it disappear? Will we, uh, what would be the next thing? And uh, yeah, what will okay. happen? Is service design a new <laughs> buzzword? Well, it's not new anymore. Is service no, design no. still a buzzword? No, but... yeah, not new word, <laughs> but, but uh, just a buzzword. A buzzword, yeah. I'm really interested in what the people will say about this. So uh, let's keep an eye on the comments. And I, uh, yeah, um, Soren, thanks so much. I think this uh, was a super interesting episode. And I want to thank you for sharing what's on your mind these days. Thanks a lot. I, I really enjoyed being here, Mark. Anytime. Cool. So what is your biggest insight from this episode? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this episode, I'd really appreciate it if you click that thumbs up button and grab the link and share it with someone who might benefit from the things we've just discussed. Don't forget that you can always sign up for my free course on how to explain service design. Check the link down below or I think it's on this side. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing the next episode.